You're listening to Radio Mayapur with the best devotional, meditation, kirtan music, and inspirational podcast. This is Radio Mayapur. Hello, Hare Krishna, everybody. This is Gangadas, your host for Radio Mayapur. Today we are near Genoa. What is called this place? This is called Pontinvrea. Pontinvrea, which is in a beautiful form. Outside of Genoa, Liguria. Ah, so Savona, yes. Savona, Savona. So today we are very, very fortunate to meet Prabhu Das, which I met a long time ago in India. And Prabhu Das is born in Verona in February 1963. And when he was 17 years old, uh, he went alone to India to reconnect or discover something about life. And uh, in 1981, <clears throat> he met the Hare Krishna movement. He dedicated himself to yoga. And first in Italy, then in India. He also published many, many books, which I will ask you to talk about. And from 2004 and 2010, he became the founder and director the, of a very famous uh, magazine called Free Spirit, Spirito Libero. And 2011, again, he came back into Bhakti. He was always connected with Bhakti, but, you know, for a moment, he was uh, working from outside. And he became responsible for the temple of Hare Krishna in Torino. And today, with his son, he took over this beautiful place where we are today with His Holiness Banu Swami. We are visiting this place, Italy, for one month. And uh, it's a beautiful farm with uh, 20 hectares of land, which is quite large. There are hills, trees, and they're going to bring cows. They have a beautiful farm house, which is a beautiful building, can, can host many people. And they're planning to develop this area with the yoga center. They also do food for life. They also distribute books. They also do program in yoga center around this area. So they're very dynamic people. And thank you very much, Prabhupada, for giving us your time today. Hare and, Krishna. And uh, uh, give us, tell us something about your early life. Uh, I mean, your family, you were born, and how the parents reacted to you becoming Hare Krishna and something like that. Hare Krishna, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> thanks a lot, Ganga Prabhu, first of all, to invite me to, for this Great pleasure. It's my pleasure. Interview. And uh, uh, I, I was born in Verona, as it was saying, and uh, in a, a bit chaotic family, actually, atheist family. So for me, the word God is uh, something very, has been for many years, something very obscure and not pleasing at all. But uh, I was uh, uh, at that time, you know, like uh, in the early 60s in, in US, uh, in Italy was the, the early 70s. Yes. So everyone was enjoying free spirit and this and that. So I, st I started to connect with uh, spiritualism because I, I decided to go in India. My motivation was not much spiritual. Everyone was going there mostly to smoke <laughs> and uh, f for free. But uh, soon, uh, my friends were not coming, so I decided to, to live alone. I was only 17. I asked my parents to sign the passport. I told them I'm going to Greece. But from, from Greece, I took one way ticket to Bombay. Wow. So I found myself at midnight in Bombay airport. And when I was there, I sat down and said, and now what I'm going to do here? <laughs> yeah. So my adventure in, in India started, started like that. Started in Bombay. And, uh, Which is also a very chaotic city. Chaotic at that city, time especially. Yeah. So then after that, I went to Pushkar ah, because yeah. uh, my address was, I had to meet some 
Italian friend, they were saying in Pushkar. In Pushkar yeah, yeah. But when I arrived in Pushkar, I discovered that my friends, they left a couple of days before. Oh. So I was really, uh, it was a, a, a bit traumatic trip on train. It was a local train, it took one and a half day, you know, I, yes. I didn't know much. But one lucky thing happened. And this I discovered after so many years. Then a couple of Brahmins, they took me in the, in the Pushkar Lake. Nice. And they forced me to take, take a bath. bath. Yeah. And mostly because they, they wanted money, you know. Oh, and, I see. But after so many years, I discovered in the reading the Srimad Bhagavatam that those who bathe in the, the Pushkar River, they get the seed of devotional service. Absolutely. So I invested well, my little <laughs> money that I had at that time. So then I went to Goa, and but then uh, from there I decided to stop with intoxication. I came back to Italy, and uh, I started meditating. Also because in, in Bombay I met a, a guy who was a, a, a sanya, you know, a disciple of Osho at that time, mm -hmm. and he introduced me to meditation. Okay. So I started to meditate following his uh, teachings. And after some time, a friend of mine, a very dear friend of mine, called me and said, One Hare Krishna has come here. Please <laughs> come to visit me. He has given me some, uh, that time, uh, how do you call it, album? Uh, yeah. Disc, you know? It's, it was a record. A record, yeah. It was 33. Yes. The big one. Yeah, the big one. And so... Uh, was uh, the George Harrison one? No, no, it was an Italian oh, one. Oh, it was the yeah. Italian one. But with some mantra, you know. So I went to his house and he was so electrified from the meeting with this Sankirtan devotee. And yeah. he invited me to the, the, their farm. And so I, I listened to that record. And uh, together, after a few days, we went... To this, uh, to farm. this, to this. Farm. Which place you went? In Villa Vanilla. It was Vanilla. just the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, just yeah. the beginning. And uh, from that uh, moment, actually, the experience in Villa Vanilla was not very well because it was so cold. It was but winter time. Winter time. But uh, I remember the eyes of the devotees and this Mahaprasad. And I was. Uh, Amazed by that, but uh, then I, we we went away after a couple of days, and uh, I always remember these devotees <laughs> chanting in this bag, and I was thinking, what are they keeping that bag? I yeah. I, I thought there were some herbs, you know, oh, sacred herbs, and they were chanting this Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. So after a couple of months. I went in the office and on the table there was a magazine, hmm. uh, uh, Ritorno a Krishna, yeah. Back to God, Back in to Italian. God. Yes. So I took the magazine and I totally forgot what I was do doing there. I started reading, I went home and I found the Maha Mantra, wow, finally, finally, you know, and uh, the, the explanation of the Maha Mantra. So what happened? I started chanting, I read the whole magazine. And then the, the next morning I went to, to work and for eight hours I chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Eight hours, I think wow. I chanted like 50 or 60 rounds yeah. for sure. Then and, uh, at five o'clock I went home and I said to my mom, Mom, I'm going, going. to Florence. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I never come back actually <laughs> to my native place. Yes, so, sometime I went, but so the experience as a brahmachari, as a full time devotee started. But I was very young, and uh, you know this is the, the, the and the movement was very young, and That's the true. leaders were very young. young. So uh, after a few years of tough brahmachari life. You know, some material desires came, and there was also some, you know, the, the, the guru this and that. So I, I decided to go to go back to India. To, nice. And going back to India for me has been very important because I entered in the culture of India. You yes. know, st I started studying Hindi, 
and uh, also Sanskrit, some basic of Sanskrit. And I start traveling. I took Chaitanya Charita Amrita and, uh, you know, the whole trip of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu going in different places. And how, that's how I met Ganga Prabhu because <laughs> the trip brought me from Mayapur then to, to Ma- Chennai, Chennai, first Madras Jagannath, at that time. Yeah, first Jagannath Puri yes, and then, then Chennai, Chennai. And then I went to Tirupati. And in Chennai, I met with Ganga Prabhu. And that was, was 1987, I think. You know? 87, yeah. Yes, it was 1987, I remember. Yeah. You were not alone, you were some other. I, I was traveling actually with Konteya Prabhu. Oh, yeah, Konteya But in Chennai, Konteya Prabhu decided to stop. Stay there, yes. And he became a disciple of uh, Jayapada Goswami. Yeah, and I decided to go to continue, to your... continue my trip along. And has been a very uh, deep experience. So I understood that the Hare Krishna movement is not just a new movement started uh, from nothing yeah. a few years back, but it is, uh, you know, we are so lucky of being part of the best movement. And uh, it is so ancient in one sense and so new. Every day is like Nava Yoga. New it's like Krishna is always absolutely, new. Absolutely, absolutely. So now I feel so uh, 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 ecstatic here in the company of uh, Ganga Prabhu and Banu Swami came, His Holiness Banu Swami came and brought and at that time, I met him, too. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, my long story short. No, that's that, very nice. But then what happened? That uh, uh, I decided then to get married. Yes. And uh, uh, two kids. But I, 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 I was feeling that I had to do my experience in the world. Sure. So uh, the experience in the world has been... Pleasing in one sense, but very tough in another sense. Yes. But, you know, Krishna has uh, put me in this situation, I discovered later on. And two kids, but the, the, I remember, I tell you, I didn't tell to Maharaj. At that time, I asked to Maharaj about astrological Yes, he advice. did your astrological chart. Yeah, and I asked him, Maharaj, uh, you know, I would think to get married, what do you think? Yes, and he, and he, his expression was <laughs> like this. He was not, <laughs> not very, very good. He wanted, me, and he was really, uh, it was really accurate. Yes, even though, even though at the end of the story, the situation is very nice because my Your kids, son the, the the both of them, both of them devotees, devotees, and uh, I had to make my experience in the world. And uh, I found myself some, somehow or other alone in the world at a certain point. And it was there that I started writing. For me, the yes. writing has been a therapeutic uh, a, a thing, you know. And, yes. uh, mm, you reconnect with Krishna through, the, through your writing. More than with Krishna, with myself. Oh, with yourself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's self-discovery. Yeah. I start writing and... Uh, I, I was in need of stop because uh, I started, a, at that time I started a business and I was traveling, 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 you know, trying to be someone, trying to make money, trying to uh, to do something useful. But I discovered after so many years that the best thing is to stop and reconnect with yourself and reconnect with Krishna. Krishna. At that time, as as Ganga Prabhu was saying about this magazine, it was, yes. it was not very famous, but it has become No, I famous. think it was uh, started well, from, started, well known. Yeah, started from nothing. You know, <clears throat> I was alone, and all my things that I had at that time was a pen and a block notice. You know? <laughs> and it's difficult to, to start a, a magazine with... With just this, a pen and notebook. Yeah. <laughs> But I wrote the first, uh, the first uh, introduction, article. yeah, the first article, and I, I was imagining myself. I was in, in uh, on the sea beach, you know, and I said, this this uh, boat is leaving now, traveling islands here and there to discover uh, the people, world. experience, and from that s- small uh, paper. Actually, the first number has come out, and then the second number, 
And then uh, it was, uh, we published 33 uh, magazines, and it was a lunar magazine, so came coming out every full moon. And uh, at the end, it was a big magazine, 100 pages, and uh, many writers was, uh, was writing, uh, uh, journalists. Uh, why I'm saying this, not just <coughs> to, to, to talk about me, no, is the experience was very important because this magazine I started came in a dream. And for three nights, I dreamt about this magazine never happened in my life that the dream for three nights, every night well, I was same dream. the same dream. <laughs> Connected. And the next day, the, the magazine, it was the second number and was going to distribute. And then the third night, I dreamt again. So at that point, I, I woke up and I said, I have to I write have to this. Do this. And I saw the title in the magazine was Spiritual Libero. That means free spirit. Free spirit. So that's why I was excited about that but you know excitement is not enough to, to yeah, publish to something publish. but excitement brought me to meet people and from one to another one to another i started to interview uh, the whole world of esoteric research you know uh, so many therapists uh, journalists uh, writers because my in intent was to give the microphone to those who knew something, you know? Right. So in a few years, I came to know all the uh, esoteric research world of the old world, actually, you know, from the Maya of the South America to the Buddhist, different kind of Buddhism, <laughs> to the, uh, <coughs> I interviewed a couple of times the Kriyananda, who is the, the first disciple of one of the main disciples of Yogananda, and in the world of Osho, in the world of so many worlds. And yes. uh, after three and a half years, of his, and we started also an editing company with the same name, and I started editing books of other people. Other people. Yeah. And my passion for, for writing was there, you know. Then all of a sudden, what happened? That uh, my uh, elder son told me I'm going to London, you know. Yes. And in joke, almost on joke, I told him, why don't you go in the Hare Krishna temple? No, I don't care about Hare Krishna. I go there <laughs> to, to do my stuff, you know. Yeah. And I told him, when you travel, better to have an address more than one address less. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, okay, give me the address. It was a point of reference, just yeah. in case anything yeah. happened. Yeah. So he went there. And, you know, because he didn't have money, he was going to the lunch program in Soul Street. Yeah. And he started washing the pots. He started uh, listening to the, to the philosophy. And one day he called me and he told me, you know, Papi, you know, Papi <laughs> has a double meaning. Yeah, of course. You know, Papi, <laughs> this philosophy is very interesting. And I remain shocked, you know. Because I said, my son is coming to tell me what I have to, to do <laughs> in my life. So I, 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 I walk for two hours. I didn't have the mala with me at that time. And I chanted on my on fingers, fingers 16 rounds. And I was crying and a voice came and tell me and told me, now, rascal, go back in the movement and do your duty in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> so I decided to come join back, again. to join again. And, uh, and, and uh, I went to Villa Vrindavan again. But what happened? That I, I was very changed inside from my experience. And the movement also, also changed, changed yeah. a lot. Many, many years has passed. Yes. So, but I humbly took the first service that they offered to me to clean the garden. And, uh, and I was praying. Every difficult was, was coming and I was chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare, Hare Hare, 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 Rama, 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 Waking up early morning, morning, 16 <coughs> rounds, very tough. And uh, every day, you know, Problems were coming because I had a lot of problems to, to also to solve around. Right. Know? 
But one day he thought, you know, Krishna, you say that you protect your devotees. Now I want to challenge if it is true. And so, <laughs> so every morning I was chanting the 16 rounds and every day all the problems somehow or other disappeared. disappeared. Or been solved or postponed, but somehow or other I could. Then I decided to go really back and um, started from Vidamindavan. Then after that, Madhusarita Prabhu invited me in Bergamo. So I, uh, for a couple of years I was there, but I was not happy because not at all, not totally happy because my vision has changed a lot in these years. And I, I was thinking I have to open something on my own, you know. Mm. So I, one night a, a dream has come and uh, I had to go to Brescia. I wanted to go to Brescia to open a temple on my own from nothing. But the dream came, and this I wrote in a, in a book that after I gave you this book. In this book. And, uh, and the dream was bringing me to Torino. There was a river, the rocks, very, very clear. The detail. Dream. So I said, Torino, I woke up and said, let's go to Torino. You know, and I started there with uh, my son, elder, uh, younger son was uh, 14 years, 16, 16 years old at that time, and a new Bhakta. And I told them, let's go to Torino. We will start with Food for Life. We will start preaching. One day we will have temple, farm. Let's go there. But, you know, we didn't have nothing. I, I had only 50 euro in the pocket. <laughs> But the blessings of Madhusavita Prabhu, who said, okay, go for it. So we went to Torino, and uh, it's amazing because when you don't have anything and only a couple boxes of books, you have to go in Sankirtan. Of course. <laughs> That's the only way. <laughs> yeah. And from that, you know, meeting one people after another, then we could open a small center, and, and we started with Food for Life. I started Italian Food for Life seven years back. Nice. And from that, you know... Everything Italian, developed. Yeah, yeah developed. So it's, a f it's proof that Krishna is taking care of his devotees. Yeah. <laughs> so you can confirm to the whole world, okay, yes. you are the living proof of this. But also I saw you wrote many books, commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, or uh, you, can say the, you can say the abridged version of Bhagavad Gita in Italian, uh, with the, of course, from Srila Prabhupada books, right? Yeah. And then you wrote some book about India. You wrote many books. Yeah, until now. You are a prolific writer, I should say. <laughs> until now, I wrote seven books. Seven books. Actually, uh, my experience in the world with the, the printing, with the editing, mm, make me understood that, uh, of course, for me, Sankirtan is uh, the best way to distribute, to distribute Krishna consciousness. Yes. And we have to go in Sankirtan. But what I thought, what I was thinking that for some people to understand the, the real meaning of Srila Prabhupada books is difficult. Yes. So I start writing to help the, those people to introduce Krishna consciousness. And, uh, uh, and um, I, I wrote the first book with his name, Hare Krishna, in every town and village. And uh, then I, I, I went to an editor, it was somebody I knew before, right. and it, he saw the book and he said, oh, Hare Krishna, a, a, a book on the Hare Krishna. There is nothing like that in the in the in the in Italy. Right. And I was wondering, you know, after Why? so many years, <laughs> nobody has written yes, anything yes. in Italian, right? Because we distribute millions of books, but yes. not in that way, you know. Yeah. So he, he said, okay, I will publish <clears> this book. So I was so enthusiastic. I wrote the second one. And the third one is an introduction. The second one you wrote is written food for the soul. Yeah. And this so and this one is not the, just about recipe, it's about the philosophy. Yes. I believe. And actually the first one and this one I also translated in English. 
Right. So I'm looking for an editor for English. Okay. And uh, no, this is for the for the soul. It looks like a recipe. It looks like a recipe yeah. book with a samosa in front and dal. <laughs> so I'll buy this book and thinking, okay, I'm going to cook some samosa or something. <laughs> Or yeah, because I, because I believe a lot on prasadam yes. and on distribution of prasadam. Of course. So I don't say what is inside the book. Yeah, I yeah, want yeah, to. Yeah. I don't want to spoil your curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> you but believe. I'm sure there is some recipe inside. Yes, yeah, some recipe. But it's about the philosophy of uh, how to nourish ourselves with the proper yeah. conscious uh, life food and. Yeah, you know the proof that I was. Uh, right in, in, in this uh, understanding is that I wrote the first three books and I went to my sister. She's 10 years older than me. Mm -hmm. And she was following like a new age stuff like this, but we're very far from Hare Krishna. So I gave her the first three books. They, they, they didn't, they were not published yet. It, it was on the, the way to be published. There was a digital print. And she wrote the books, she uh, read, the, read book. the books, and after a few days she called me and she said, wow, now I understood what is Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> <laughs> and she joined the movement. Yeah, you know? she's so, here. And today. now I she's here. Her. So yeah. I, I, I realized that my vision was correct, that many people, they would like to join they would like to be close, but some for some people it's difficult to to understand the philosophy to 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 to, to overcome the first step and yes. the second step. Yes. So my books uh, is a number attempt to help these people. Nice. To, Basically, you are explaining simple terminology or words how to understand what the context of the Bhagavad Gita, yes. so that people can easily you know, relate to it and then can understand. Because if you read the whole Bhagavad Gita, it's like so many names, so many things happen in there. And Prabhupada Purple touched many, many points. So yes, I understand this is true. As much as possible, I try to. Yes. As so many devotees around the world, I'm, I'm What I'm about the it. other books you wrote? You wrote other books are, uh, some are autobiography, but mm -hmm. also introduction to um, Bhagavad Gita philosophy, Srimad Bhagavatam philosophy, the, the philosophy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Beautiful. And, you know, this what the people need and what yes. the world needs, but they don't know. <laughs> yeah. So we have to, our effort is to, to make them know. And, this also is uh, written here and in, in other books uh, also about the food for life because I right. believe in a lot in this food for yeah. life. We Prashad started in Turin uh, seven years back from the first dormitory with the homeless and 30 people were there. And uh, now we are in nine cities in all Italy and this project is becoming a, a main project of the whole movement in Italy. Wow. For food distribution to the homeless, nice, nice. and so many uh, newspapers talk about that, and the municipality in Torino now they are giving funds every every year, and also we are participating to the bando, come si chiamano i bandi comunali, bandi europei. Um, some... uh, when you get funds from yeah, that means you are you are requesting funds from international yeah. forum yeah. so they can a sponsor for sponsor, doing your yeah, yeah. yeah you're looking for sponsor for doing this yeah, yeah. particular we, we, service we receive already is, we already received yeah. from the commune of uh, uh, Torino but all also in, Europe, I think the central government can give also you from government. Europe and also from regional projects. So nice. now the project is expanding all over Italy. So everywhere you have people who are cooking, offering and distributing to those. Yes, yes. And, so and, nice. Uh, some are our people that we started, but other temples also they started and nice. following this this uh, nice. path. And so now we are in nine cities uh, around Italy. But uh, my my goal is to reach so many other cities. Of course, we have so many cities. We are the only one association who distribute vegetarian food to the right. homeless. Right, yeah. So this is very 
appreciate from the public opinion because you are doing su something substantial for the people there. Yes. That's very nice. And tell us about this project you're doing here with this devotees in this beautiful place in the countryside. What's your vision about the future? Uh, I know you are planning to bring cows, to build a small temple, and already you are successful every Sunday feast, 50 people comes, every day there's new people coming. I can see your enthusiasm is very touching to everybody. So tell us about your vision about this place, because this is only a few months ago you got this place with yes. 20 hectares of land, which is beautiful, with the hills and a small river, a lot of fruit tree, nuts, and it's very enchanting place. It's an oasis mm. for people who, are, who want to come and live an experience, a spiritual experience. Yes, this uh, we are just putting in practice the instruction of Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada right. said, distribute prasadam, distribute holy name, distribute my books, and you start projects, rural projects, yes. to show to the people that it's possible to survive, to <laughs> survive and apply this principle, simple living, high, high thinking. thinking. But it's simple to say, but it's not so yeah, easy to, to, do, to do it. Yes. So, and, and we also started with cow protection because uh, after Torino, we took charge of Genova Temple. <coughs> uh, yes. Some trouble was there, so they asked me to, 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 to take charge of so, Genova Temple. But what happened that the day after that I took charge of Genova Temple, the pandemic started. Mm. So we found ourselves totally stopped. <laughs> yeah. Books, no books. And we, we have been saved thanks to Food for Life. We received funds from the government and we could overcome the, the trouble. But in general, there was one uh, um, farmer who uh, was a uh, allevatore. Come si dice allevatore? Uh, it was a person who, who was grew, taking care, taking of, care of animals before yes. knowing the movement. And when he came in touch with the movement, he decided to do AIMSA uh, cow protection. Nice. Not totally when I came, he came in touch with me, but I told him, if you totally become AIMSA, then I, we can sponsor a project together. So we start looking because he had... Ahimsa already, means they are not killing the cow. No, yeah, of course. And so they can take the milk, they can graze them, then become and old protect, and die, and they'll protect them, but they will not kill them. The cows and also the, the, the calf. Yes, uh, the calf. So uh, we started looking for uh, a place with land because in Genoa Temple there is no land. Yes. We start looking around and we found this beautiful place, a couple hours from Genoa, in one hour from Genoa, with 25 hectares of land and a beautiful building. And the price was very cheap, you know. So I ran here and uh, I, you know, as I was saying yesterday to Ganga Prabhu, I was telling <laughs> the story that the group of Buddhists, <coughs> they were buying this. Yes. But, you know, somehow Radha Krishna arranged and we took it for, for, at the last <coughs> moment, you know, at the last moment. And, and we didn't have money, money at that time, but yes. I was praying every morning, 16 rounds. Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna. So, and somehow Radha, now we are sitting here. Yes. It looks like a dream, you know, yes. because a couple months ago we were not here. And of course, it was cheap price, but the building was totally, uh, how you say, abandoned. The land was totally abandoned. How many years people did not live here? Uh, sorry? For how many years? Yeah, there was for no 10, people. Years. 10 years. 10 years, that means nobody yeah, was living here how for 10 the years. But the building is so nice. And it's in, beautiful. In a couple months, we already... Repaint, uh, repaint, restore. Yeah, yeah it's and, very beautiful. And, uh, and we do everything ourselves because we are capable, many of us are capable of doing things, uh, practical thing, electricity, uh, and plumbing. Uh, yeah, everything. Painting. Um, and now we're here, and, and now our dream is to 
uh, our goal, actually, you know, is not a dream. Now is a goal. It's becoming a reality. <laughs> is uh, is to protect the cows. We are now. We have thirty cows. We are waiting to bring the cows here because we need some permit, permi permission from the local, from the, uh, yeah, from the local government. And is to, we have a lot of land, and uh, we can use this place also to organize uh, yoga retreats, so we can maintain ourselves uh, by renting the place for yoga retreats. And we want to work the land and preach Krishna consciousness to everyone and give them the example that Krishna consciousness is uh, something living force. It's, not it's a doable thing. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 you know, in the Lila Amrita, there is a title of a chapter entitled, Nobody Listen to a Poor Man. You know? Right. So, uh, and since we are here, the people starting coming and the, the place is so beautiful. And, and you know, they, they start listening what we yeah. are saying. You know? yeah. So, uh, everything is exciting if we put our focus on sadhana. You know, yes. every morning we have this Mongol Arctic. A week ago, we, we came here with nothing, uh, only a picture of Pancha Tatwa and two plants, three plants of Tulsi. And I was praying, you know, because with a picture of Pancha Tatwa, it's, it's not uh, too much. The most the merciful. Devotion, because in the other temple, we had the deities. So coming here, we were praying in the morning to Tulsi, and all of a sudden, in, in one week, an altar arrived from a friend, from a devotee, and the deities of Gornitai came from, from Vrindavan. Amen. They shipped to us Beautiful. in a week. And now we have a morning program yes. with sadhana. So if we focus in, in deity worship, in Tulsi worship, and in holy name worship, and in Bhagavad worship, and in Prasad worship. Then from nine o'clock until ten in the in the in, until seven in the evening, you work hard to to do whatever is possible to spread Krishna consciousness. And then seven o'clock we again have a, a Sunday our evening program, program. lecture and kirtan. And then you go to sleep and Krishna come in, in a dream and suggest you what to do for the next yeah, day. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. So any special message you would like to give to the people listening today to this podcast or radio Mayapur? The message is uh, uh, Come to visit us. Yes. <laughs> of course, if you are far away, today is so easy. You just go in our website. website. Uh, Hare Krishna is still the, the old name because we, we, we need some time on Facebook to change the name. Hare Krishna Genova. Okay. And the, the, the name of the place is Goloka Eco Farm. Goloka Eco Farm. Goloka so, Eco Farm. Everybody who listen today is welcome to Genoa Goloka Eco Farm. Goloka Eco. It's really Goloka. It's beautiful this place. <laughs> I tell you, I feel like I'm in Goloka. <laughs> <laughs> and Goloka means the, the planet of cows, you know. So yes. this is one very important thing that I learned. And this, <laughs> thanks to the, the Ministry of Agriculture, Agriculture and Cow Protection, because yes. three years back, I started following their lectures and I became the in charge of cow protection for Italy since nice. three years. And uh, drinking this milk, Aimsa milk and the cheese and participating to these lectures, I, I, I really understood the importance of cow protection. I was reading about cow protection since so many years, but I really didn't understand the meaning. Since I protect the cow and I work hard to protect the cows, and then I understood the value of, of the word of Srila Prabhupada. So if we protect the cows, Krishna is really satisfied. Yeah. Otherwise, 50% of our philosophy is gone. is gone. And, you know, if you have only one leg, it's not easy to walk. So we have to uh, protect the cows and protect the Brahmin culture, worship Krishna, and and be friendly each other with devotees and be patient. Yes. Because in Kali Yuga, 
so many troubles are always there, but if we are patient and humble, we depend on Krishna. And dependent on Krishna. And Mother Earth, I see, is giving because you are growing already zucchini yeah. and there is so many herbs like rosmarino, basil, and you planted fagiolini, yeah. tomato. And I can see, you know, in a few months already so much is coming. So the Earth, with Mother Earth, is in love with the devotee. You want to reciprocate with the body because by protecting the cows, and protecting the earth, and welcoming everybody, and sharing the wealth of knowledge you have, then Mother Earth become very pleased, and Prabhupada, the Acharya, Krishna become very pleased. So good job. Thanks. Thank Thanks you so lot. much. I wish you all success. I hope to come back next year with Maharaj, and we'll spend more time with you. And if there is anything I can do, please let me know. Thank you, Ganga Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. Thanks to Hare everybody Krishna. for listening. Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna. You're listening to Radio Mayapur with the best devotional, meditation, kirtan music, and inspirational podcast. This is Radio Mayapur.